it involves a, a disc called a Nipkow disc, uh, which is in rotating at a high speed and therefore impractical right away for use uh, in the home, uh, causes the spots of light to pass across the image of the person's body or his face, and a television photo tube picks up that signal and turns it into a signal which can be transmitted across the air and then with a similar approach at the other end uh, can reproduce back into a picture. It's not highly satisfactory, it's not very good in definition, uh, it tends to be noisy. Altogether it has the disadvantages of a mechanical system. So it would, the receiver and the transmitter both have revolving disks yes. which rotate at the same speed. Yes. How large would the picture be on the receiver? Well, the first one I saw was at GE in 1927. The picture was two inches by two inches. It was very hard to tell what it was depicting. <laughs> was there a color tint to the picture? A green color, because that was the color of phosphor that one can put onto a cathode ray tube, which is easiest to do, so green was used. And how would sound be broadcast with this system? Just by standard sound means going to be a totally separate channel and broadcast in the normal way. And what were they broadcasting up in the lab there? What would they show? Oh, they'd show a man smoking a cigarette to show the motion of the smoke, uh, things of that sort, and not, nothing very spectacular. Did you think this was the future of the world, this mechanical system? No, no, it didn't seem practical. Meanwhile, uh, Dr. Rosen over in Russia back in the early 1900s has pro had proposed that it would be done by electronic means with cathode ray, which were impra not impractical at the time. No one could make a tube to do what his patent called for, but he got the patent on electronic television. And people who studied it, particularly doctors of work, and saw that that is the future, not the mechanical scanner. And he spent his life working on development developing electronic means of accomplishing television. Today's broadcast, I believe, are 525 lines. Yes. What was the optimum amount of lines you could see on a mechanical system? Well, the optimum number they, they, could, they could produce, because <laughs> it never was enough lines. Uh, I don't know. They may got, got maybe as high as 50 lines, but that's not a very good picture. So it would be mere shadows, would you say? Well, in a way, it depends on whether you're showing a great big object uh, or some finer thing that requires more detail. Was Alexanderson proud of his system? Yes, he was. He was very disappointed when it never got into use. I'm sure he later agreed when he saw the progress made with cathode ray on electronic television, was pleased then that his system was not the one to win out. Nonetheless, do you feel that Dr. Alexanderson played an important role in the development of television? Oh yes, he, he was, a, he was a, a very top scientist and his ideas on how to pick up the light and how to develop more sensitive cells to pick up the light which would shine through the disc, that sort of thing, he was a leader and he contributed a great deal.